This is the Ameren Tube Light. Along with the release of Ameren's new Flex Lights, Ameren's new Tube Lights are big news, and they're available in two foot and four foot versions. First, as always, what we wanna know is, can these lights hold up in the field? Let's find out. This is a Synity Review, supported by B&H and CVP. There's been a long running joke on the Aperture user Facebook group that the most off requested Aperture fixture of a tube light is one of the few lighting products Aperture just wasn't gonna make. What a difference a few years of asks make. The Aperture tube light is finally here and in a twist, it isn't branded Aperture at all, but it's branded under the more prosumer focused Ameren name. As to why the Aperture team branded the new tube light under Ameren, this is what Brandon Lee, product marketing manager for Aperture, has to say. Quote, this is our first venture in the tube market and we wanted to first open this form factor up to the Ameren brand to grow the ecosystem for our prosumer users. Two, Making this an Ameren-centric product allows us to target these products to a more price-conscious consumer. And three, this product doesn't have some features that we would need to integrate in order to brand it as an Aperture product, such as Lumen Radio Serum X, waterproofing, and potentially other features." End quote. As a professional user of various higher-end Aperture products, ranging from their 1200D Pro to their Nova P600C, I'll admit I get a bit tentative testing products billed as entry level. Maybe they just aren't meant for me and the work I do. However, that doesn't mean there aren't many things to appreciate about these new Ameren tube lights. I'm always looking for high output fixtures that can maintain flattering skin tones or can quickly be mounted to tricky spots or even portable lights to check on a plane if needed. Let's see how the T2C and T4C hold up. At first glance, the Ameren tube lights with their edge-to-edge -edge LED emitter coverage lean more towards the Astera Titan exterior feel and less towards Nanlite's Pava tube offerings. I appreciate this because I want as much real estate as possible devoted to lighting talent on a single side of a fixture and less space devoted to button management. The design also makes for a sleeker on-camera look if you use the Ameren tube or Astera Titan as a background practical element. The build of both the T4C and T2C is heavily dependent on plastic, which suggests these fixtures can't take any sort of impact. On the plus side, this lack of metal keeps the overall weight down. Thankfully, the Ameren team has decided to go with a standard T12 width with both the T2C and T4C, which means you'll find a wide variety of third-party accessory options available. Plenty of quarter 20 and hardier 3 8 mounting points are present all over the rear of the tubes, though you'll be limited to 3 8 on each end. Given the relatively low weight of the two foot and four foot Ameren tubes, you could perhaps get away with a single quarter 20 mounting point with a safety tie. The industrial strength magnets I use for mounting other fixtures works very well on the Ameren tubes. You can also find a variety of options on B&H and CVP. So at first glance, although the plastic build gives some concern, the multitude of mounting points and the low weight without the battery attached, more on that in a second, make for a positive first impression. Now to power. Any chance that I'd confuse the Ameren tubes with other brands quickly vanished when I pick up the external battery pack that is interchangeable between the 20 watt two foot and the 40 watt four foot versions. This 77 watt hour battery pack may be the coolest feature and when mounted gives the whole fixture where the battery becomes the grip a lightsaber vibe. <laughs> Powering tube lights has always been hit or miss. Internal battery packs eventually reach the end of life, requiring either one, the whole unit to be shipped to repair facilities, or two, the attaching of heavy external batteries, reducing the form factor of the tube light that made it so appealing in the first place. Ameren tube lights present another power option that feels safer. Everything clicks into place seamlessly and potentially more useful in the long run. At 100% intensity on the T4C with the battery pack, I got just over an hour and a half of battery life. The only issue I have with the external battery pack is the weight of the pack itself. The center of balance moves directly under the end mounted battery pack, making mounting the whole fixture overhead a little less easy. This is how you might mount both tubes overhead, pictured here without external battery attachment. 
You could also power the T2C or 24C from wall power using the 12 to 16.8 volt, 24 volt DC barrel input. Unfortunately, barrel inputs are finicky in my experience and prone to being yanked out mid-shot compared to locking limo or other power cable options. Still, note, those options tend to be more expensive. We can't pretend that the LED color tube segment is in a crowded place with the likes of Astera, Quasar Science, Nanlite, and others all vying for market position. Some of the other four foot color LED tubes on the market are the Astera Titan at $850, the Quasar Science Q50 Rainbow 2 RGBX at $750, the Nanlite Pavo Tube 2 30X at $579, the Digital Photo RGB Tube at $299, the Ameren T4C reviewed here comes in at $329. Keep in mind that each of the above varies in capabilities and feature set. Only in length, four foot, are they similar. And FYI, at two foot length, the Ameren T2C runs $199. Now, to connectivity. The biggest initial draw with the Ameren Tube Lite might simply be that it works well with the Citus Link app you already use for your other Ameren and Aperture products. And for some, that might be enough to justify the cost of admission. Having your LightStorm 600D Pro, LS 300D Mark II, and Nova 300C controllable with your favorite mobile device is just too darn appealing to pass up. However, at a certain feature count, wireless DMX will be the only way to go. Unfortunately, built-in wireless DMX is not available on the T2C or T4C at this time. Ameren tube lights do have a USB-C port marked DMX that requires a USB-C to 5-pin DMX 512 adapter for use. Note, the adapter isn't included. Now we come to the output and color accuracy testing of the T4C. I've tested the output using Lux and color handling using Kelvin of the T4C at a distance of three feet with my Siconic C700U spectrometer. And here are the results with no modifiers attached. This is at three foot with a target of 5600K. Hitting result of 5620 Kelvin with a target of 5600K is fantastic. And one of the best results for Kelvin accuracy I've seen recently. And here's a test with a target of 3200K. Also a very solid Kelvin result, 3270K with a slight hit to overall output when compared to the previous 56K targeted test. And now for a test somewhere in the middle of that range at 4700K. Again, spot on with that Kelvin target and the output remains in a similar spot to the 32K test. Here's a quick look at how accurate the colors are coming out of the T4C. We're landing in the mid to lower 90s in terms of average CRI with the exception of R9, red, and R11, green. These are decent results for our color rendering test, but notably not as good as for the Nova 600C. You can find the Nova P600C testing results in my online CineD review. The CRI results were identical with the T2C, and I saw a 40% hit to output with the two foot version when compared to the four foot version. So, final thoughts. A plastic build, heavy external mounted battery, and limited DMX options can't detract from the wealth of available mounting points, fantastic Kelvin scores, and the fact that you have a mountable battery to begin with. The edge-to-edge -edge design of the T4C and the T2C make these worthy entries for Ameren and Aperture into the tube segment. There you have it. That's my review of Ameren's new tube lights. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Red Studio in San Diego for their help with this review. Go to redstudiosd.com for more info on how to book their beautiful studio space.